project here is to make a plinth about this shape out of this piece of zebra wood. And the first thing we need to do, it's not flat and it's not square. So first task is figuring out where to cut. I'm gonna do this at, let's say 18 inches. All right. So that gives us our roughly 18 inch piece of zebra wood. Our next task is to put this guy, this face, completely flat. I've already given myself a sliver. Nice. Um, to get this face completely flat. So I'm at the jointer. Uh, just taking small bits off. Mark it so I know what that's in the Okay, here are two jointed boards uh, with right angles. And what I want to do is figure out where the midpoint is and then uh, bandsaw these into two pieces. So now we got to get the bandsaw ready.
So these actually ended up staying pretty stable through the cut. So they're good on that one side. And now we just need to join these guys. One side of this board is pretty cuffed on that side. Less so on that side. All right, now we've got our boards flattened on one side at least. And you can start to see that, you know, mixing patterns that are orient these things. And actually, this looks pretty, pretty cool. And this one is more linear, but kind of like that one the best. All right, so next job is to just true up the uh, up the edges to make sure they're 90 degrees now that we've faced these two extra boards. You can see this, these boards are not the same thickness. So I'm going to plane them down to the same thickness. them they're all exactly the same width and ready to be cut and glued together. Next job is to create a glue edge, a super smooth glue edge between these two boards. This is our domino, and basically it shoots a bit into the wood at exactly the center point of this guy, and then you use little wooden pieces. To... So you create those holes on both sides, and then you use these wooden bits to go between them. So the the boards will be like this, and you won't see it, but inside them there'll be a domino like that, connecting them. And we have these holes in the, each side, and should take three of these guys. This is the tight one. And that is still pretty tight. And this is that one. 
Run, this could get interesting. Huh. Switch back. That is weird. Well, I guess we're going to run. Yeah. Voila. over the top. Bingo. All right, glue and clamp time. dry, I'm going to cut out my template, uh, and the idea is if I use this piece of plywood, if I can get the right shape, then I can actually cut those others and route them so they're exactly the shape of this template, and it's easier to screw up on a template than it ends on a nice wood like that. But in order to do that, I've got to change my bandsaw blade. Our next step is to true up this template, which is pretty close but pretty rough edges, into something smooth using the belt sander. Okay, now we've got our template, which is relatively smooth. But we just have to figure out where we want to cut these pieces. So I think you'd want this swirl pattern to be right in the middle. So something like that. Let's see. Now we've got our template and we've got rough cut pieces. So our next trick is to use the template to route 
the remainder off. So they're exact. The way we do that is we use double stick tape. So now we're going to use this drill bit, which is a flush trim bit. This bearing will run along the uh, template, and these blades cut everything below the bearing flush with the bearing. Raise it up. So the bearing clears the workpiece and the blade makes contact. Yeah, perfect. All right, that first one is done. Our next trick is we want to put a round over on this edge. I've got my half inch round over bit. I'm going to put it about halfway up, take a little bit, and then we'll raise it up and take a little bit more. So we'll put the top down so it starts getting rounded. And you can see the edge profile has rounded over. All right, off to the sanding bench. Before we put in the final sanding, I want to make some holes for these rubber feet to slot into so that the thing doesn't skid around or mar, mar tables. 
So I'm using a half inch Forstner bit. And drill. All right, time for our last sand. So I'm gonna go up to 240. All right, that's got up for sanding. Time to finish this guy. So I have um, used compressed air to blow out the pores and acetone and a rag to get any of the smoochers off. These have dried overnight after their first coat. Now we need to smooth them out, burnish them with some super fine steel wool. Those need to sit for about 10 minutes. And now it is time to just wipe them dry. Okay, that's got it for round two. We'll see how they look uh, after they've cured. So we've got to do eight hours of cure, at least. So maybe later tonight, come check on them, see how they look. These have cured overnight and they look pretty good. So just wipe them down. And that'll be it for the uh, finishing. Last step, well, second to the last step, is putting in the rubber feet.
Okay. Now we just let those set up. These are done and set. Which means it's time for the finishing touch. All right, our next step is to put on the brand. And that is a wrap. Hope you enjoyed the video.